G'day and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna chat about gear. We're gonna chat about affordable gear versus expensive gear. And what's the difference between the two? Do you need expensive gear or can you use affordable gear and get good shots? What are the advantages of this expensive gear? That's what we're gonna talk about today. I've got a test for you to do to see if you can tell the difference just by looking at some photos. First, let's outline what I mean by affordable gear. Now, affordable is very subjective and it depends on your personal circumstances. But for this video, affordable means anywhere between say 600 and 2000 US for the camera and the lens. This here is what I would class as affordable. It's a Canon 405.6 lens. You could pick this up for around 650 second hand. And this body here is a Canon 40D, a very old body. And you can actually buy this for 60 bucks. I wouldn't actually recommend this camera. I'd probably suggest getting a 7D or something more recent. So very affordable and can still take nice images. And I'll demonstrate that later on. So what do I mean by expensive gear? Well, it's pretty much anything that's north of say 6,000 US. Now you're spending some serious money and you're gonna be getting some big lenses such as this one and the newer cameras. Okay, let's take a test. Do you think you can tell the difference between the two kits? Do you think you can tell easily which image was taken with an affordable kit and which image was taken with an expensive kit? I've got five images to show you. What I want you to do is just keep a tally of how many you get right out of five. And maybe in the comments, just type how many you got out of five, whether it was five out of five, four out of five. And let me know, did you find it difficult? Did you find it easy? What stood out? All right, the first comparison is actually the thumbnail. It's a beautiful, superb fairy wren. And I think this one's actually pretty hard. The image on the left is actually probably my favorite superb fairy wren shot because I like the pose and the tails up, which is indicative of this species. Can you tell which is which? So the image on the left was actually taken back in 2012 with my 7D and 405.6. And the one on the right is a more recent photo taken with my current gear. I think if you found this one difficult, it shows you what can be achieved with affordable gear. And given the right conditions, you can take very good images with affordable gear. All right, let's look at another one. This time it's a beautiful chestnut teal male duck. I like both shots, but I think this one's probably a little bit easier than the first one to tell which is which. Do you think the top one or the bottom one was taken with the 7D? If you thought the bottom one, you'd be correct. So the top one's taken with my current kit and the bottom one was taken many years ago with the 7D. I think you can tell just with the detail that the 7D shot's just lacking the fine detail that the 5D body was, but they are both very nice images and I'm very happy with both of those. All right, let's look at the incredible migratory shorebird called the Bartow Goblet. I couldn't wait to photograph this bird in breeding plumage. Uh, I believe it was early March, maybe 2012 or 13 and I was really excited to photograph this bird. So I photographed this first with my 7D and then later obviously with a 5D body. Which do you think is the 7D? The one on the right is actually the one taken with the 7D and the one on the left with the later 5D and 500mm lens. All right, let's have a look at uh, the beautiful Eastern Yellow Robin. Which one of these is taken with the affordable gear and which is the expensive gear? It's actually pretty tough to tell, isn't it? If you pick the left one as the 7D, you'd be right and the right one is the 5D body. But they are, again, very, very similar. All right, the last one, another beautiful robin, and this time it's a red cat robin. I remember when I first photographed this bird, I was so excited because I'd seen it in book, but I'd never actually seen it in person. And remember when I saw it, I was just blown away with how colorful it was and how beautiful it was. So I was absolutely over the moon when the very first session I had with the species, I came away with one of these shots. So which one do you think it was that I took with the 7D? Well, it happened to be the left shot. That was the one I took, I think 2012, on an amazing trip I took with a good mate. And I'm very happy with that image, and again, taken with affordable gear. Okay, so how did you go? How many did you get out of five? Did you find that difficult, or was it easy? Did you really have to look to see the detail, or did the backgrounds give it away? I'd be interested to know in the comments. What I hope this little test demonstrated is that you can take images that are very similar in the right conditions. Is the 5D 12 times better than the 7D? No, it's definitely not. And on the web, it's very difficult to tell. What I hope these examples show is it gives you some confidence if you've got more affordable gear that you can go out there and get really nice images. You don't have to have that expensive gear. So the obvious difference to me is just the overall detail. If you look closely, the 5D and 500 just has more detail and that's to be expected. It's got more megapixels and I had more focal length. We have a close up look of the chestnut teal. It becomes quite obvious which is which. Right, so what is the minimum kit we need to take good shots? So ideally you want a camera that has say at least 16 megapixels, a focal length of at least 300 millimeters. If you have anything less than that, you're gonna to struggle to have the bird big enough in the frame and get the detail that you want. 
but you can get that for an affordable price. I'm thinking, say, the 7D upwards, maybe the D7100 upwards. You know, you could pick those bodies up for 200 plus. And if you've got the money, the D500 or maybe the 90D, those are really good birding cameras that will do you very well. So these bodies are, are good. The megapixels is enough. FPS is good. IQ is good. Overall, a really good starting camera. The issue with a lot of these older crop bodies has always been their noise handling capabilities. I know with my 7D, I very rarely wanted to go over ISO 800, and that kind of limits your shutter speed and the aperture that you can use. So you can see on the screen, this is a shot I took of a uh, Eastern Yellow Robin on my old 7D at ISO 1600, and if we zoom in, the noise is very visible. But luckily, with the improvement in noise removal software, is much less of an issue than it used to be. So I often get asked, how do I remove noise in my images? I use Topaz Denoise. I use Topaz as a plugin within Photoshop, but it can be used in Lightroom or standalone. You simply activate the plugin and it removes the noise from your image. It's that simple. You'd increase the strength with some sliders and you can see on the screen just how well it works when I slide from left to right. It basically just removes all of the noise. I actually mask the bird so that the noise reduction doesn't apply to the actual bird itself and just the background. I reached out to Topaz and they actually offered me a 15% off code. If you go to the description below, I've got a link there. If you click on that link, you can download a free trial if you want. And if you are in a position to purchase the software, use the offer code DwadePayton15 and that'll give you 15% off at checkout. Now these, if you do use this link, it actually gives me a little commission, which I'm extremely grateful for and helps the channel. So if you're looking for some great noise removal software, I'd highly suggest Topaz Denoise. Now I often get asked, what's more important, the camera or the lens? And with wildlife and birding, ultimately I believe the lens is far more important. Nearly any new camera with say 16 megapixels plus can take a good shot. But if you don't have the right focal length or a soft lens, it doesn't matter what camera you use, you're never gonna get good shots. For example, take a look at this image on the screen of a Jackie Winter. This was actually taken with a $60 40D camera, but I attached it to my expensive 500 millimeter lens. You'd be hard pressed to tell or guess what camera actually took the shot, but it's obvious that a good lens must have been used because the background's nicely out of focus and the bird does have plenty of detail. Now let's say I actually had the latest camera, so a full frame body, and I attached a 70 millimeter lens to it and I tried to take the same photo. I'd end up with a shot like this, which it doesn't matter what camera I use, I'm never gonna get the detail because the bird's just always gonna be too small. But let's say I used a 400 millimeter lens instead, now it's starting to look a lot better, but the bird is still a little bit far away. So the more focal length you have, obviously the better. But the quality of the 500 is fairly obvious and with a 1.4 converter, 700 millimeters of focal length creates a really nice picture that you can see on the screen. This would just be really hard to achieve with say a 300 f4 or similar. Now the lens choice is probably one I get asked all the time and it's really difficult to answer and it depends a lot on your circumstances and, and what you're trying to photograph. All right, so I've put up on the screen a list of the lenses which I would probably recommend as your first proper dedicated birding lenses. And it differs from system to system, but these lenses should do you well should you buy them. I haven't used all these lenses, so I can't vouch for every single one of them, but I know they're very popular online and a lot of people use them. So maybe do your own research and come to your final decision. And basically the color system there, green means it's best in class and red means it's probably the worst in class. So they're just rated amongst the lenses that are shown on the screen there. I would always recommend spending more on your lens than on your camera, unless it's an R5 perhaps. So it appears you can take really good shots with affordable gear. So why would anyone spend thousands and thousands on expensive gear? Well, I think the biggest advantage of expensive gear is it allows you to get shots that you couldn't with affordable gear. What do I mean by that? Well, there's scenarios and circumstances where you need high ISO, low shutter speeds, focal length. And if you've got those things, it helps you get the shot. Let's have a look at an example. This photo on the screen is of a Mallee ringneck. I love this shot and I took it last year with a couple of mates. So basically we had no light. And what that meant is I had to use an ISO of 6400, which is pretty high. And I actually used the max aperture of 5.6. And this gave very low shutter speed of 1 60th of a second. Now at those settings, it would have been impossible for me to get a usable shot with my old 7D and 405.6. I basically wouldn't have been close enough and I wouldn't have been able to deal with the noise that the camera would have produced at those settings. And it would probably be soft at those shutter speeds. So basically I was only able to take the shot because the gear allowed me to do so. All right, another example I'd like to show you is this photo of an Eastern Curlew. 
If any of you have tried to photograph this bird, you know how notoriously difficult it is to approach. It basically just flies off the moment you get to the beach or the estuary or wherever you are photographing it. So I tried many times with my 7D and 400 5.6. I got some shots, but I was never able to get the shot with lots of detail. It wasn't until I got my 500 with a 1.4 converter that I was able to start getting the shots that I wanted. Because I was using a big full frame megapixel camera, I was able to create this headshot, which I really like. Again, this simply wouldn't have been possible with my 7D and 400 5.6. I think this is probably the reason why people upgrade. They simply don't want to miss the opportunity or miss the shots that are presented before them. There's nothing worse than having a bird in front of you and not being able to photograph it because your gear is letting you down. So I think that's one of the big advantages of expensive gear is it allows you to take shots that affordable gear possibly wouldn't. So you're increasing your odds of actually getting the shot that you're after. And if you've spent a lot of money traveling or going to these different places, the last thing you want is your gear letting you down. So with DSLRs, we haven't seen that much improvement over the years. Of course, we've got more megapixels and the cameras have got slightly better and better, but my Canon 5D4 has plenty of weaknesses such as the buffer, the autofocus isn't as good as it could be, and a few other things. But with Canon's new R5, things have drastically changed. That camera is game-changing and revolutionary. If we compare the R5 to the 5D Mark IV, I've listed what I believe to be all the important features for a wildlife camera. And as you can see, the R5 just absolutely obliterates the 5D in nearly every regard, except for perhaps price and the viewfinder experience. The R5 is going to increase your odds drastically of getting good shots. The Animal Eye AF is going to mean you're going to have more sharp shots, you're going to get better bird and flight shots. The ISO is more usable. The buffer means you can take a heap of shots without it slowing down on you. Basically, somebody who's got an R5 is just gonna have a far easier time of getting good shots than somebody with a 5D4. And there's no way of getting around that. So do I think it's worth upgrading to an R5? If you can afford it, definitely. It should also be made extremely clear that just because you have expensive gear doesn't mean you're immediately gonna take great shots. Take a look at this shot. It was actually taken with my 500 millimeter lens, but because the bird's far away, it's up a tree, it's in shadow, it's surrounded by branches, it's a terrible photo. It wouldn't matter what kit I had, I would always have a bad photo. But compare that to this shot, which was taken with the same lens of the same species, but it's a dramatically look different looking photo. The difference is the application of the fundamentals of bird photography. Good gear is only as good as the person using it. I know several photographers that use some very affordable gear, but take amazing shots. And many of their photos are far better than any of the shots I take with my expensive gear. And that's the key, isn't it? So is expensive kit worth the money over the more affordable kit? I guess that's the big question, isn't it? And at the end of the day, it depends on your personal circumstances. But there's no denying that expensive kit will enable you to get better photos. And it's gonna make it a lot easier and increase your odds. So the expensive kit has a lot of advantages that it makes the bird bigger in the frame through longer focal length, your IS, your image quality, the size of the megapixels, the autofocus, all these things go to, towards creating better images. But I think the hardest decision is probably for people who can't really afford to upgrade, but they really want to. So my personal circumstances is I'd love to upgrade to an R5, but for me to change from DSLR to mirrorless, it's gonna cost me around 8,000 Australian dollars. By the time I buy the camera, batteries, memory card, adapter, grip, you know, eight grand is a lot of money to jump to a camera that ultimately is only gonna take photos that are a little bit better than what I have. So I just can't justify spending that sort of money in my current circumstances. And I'm sure many of you are the same. Perhaps you need to have a look at what system you already have, how good are the photos you're already taking, and how much benefit are you gonna get from upgrading? Perhaps you can wait, maybe save a little bit more, wait for those cameras to come down in cost, or look at the second hand market. All right, so the next part of the video was actually supposed to be me going into the field and using my affordable kit and my expensive kit and comparing the shots. I actually did do that and I filmed it and I could easily show you the best shots I got from both kits. But I think it would be far more beneficial if I actually shared with you exactly what happened and what I've learned from that experience. So I actually started off with the 40D and the 405.6. It was extremely overcast, so the conditions were fairly poor. I actually ended up dialing in ISO 800, which is pretty high for a crop body, uh, 7.1 aperture and a shutter speed of 400th of a second. I mistakenly thought that those settings were correct and that I'd be able to use that handheld and get lots of good shots. So I took probably 200 shots with the 40D and I did have a look on the back of the screen and they appeared to be okay. 
But when I got home later, I checked on the computer and the majority of the shots were soft or just out of focus and just lacked detail. So if you have a look at this shot of the Jackie Winter, the pose isn't too bad, but when we start zooming in, you can see that it's just slightly soft. And here's the shot of the Willy Wagtail. It's just missed focus. It just hasn't got the detail that we would like. You can see the other shot that I took shortly after this is in focus, but the majority of them were actually out of focus. I actually wondered what had gone on. I thought, oh, is there something wrong with the lens or the camera? So I looked at my 5D shots that I took in the same conditions and they were fine, they were sharp and, and there was no issue. So, you know, my immediate thought was it must be the gear. So it quickly dawned on me that perhaps it wasn't the gear and maybe it was the user, which is slightly hard to admit. I haven't actually used that kit for some time in sort of overcast conditions. I've got so used to the IS of the 500 and the 5D that I've come a little bit lazy. And when, when I think about it, I was just asking too much of the camera. The shutter speed was too low, the ISO was too high for being handheld. And I also noticed that I didn't actually have high speed mode on. So I didn't have the highest frames per second. And that can often help you get sharp shots because if you take a burst, often, you know, a few of them in the middle will be sharp. So I wasn't shooting at high speed. So ultimately it was user error. Um, and I'm happy, happy to admit that. And so what I decided to do was go back the next day. I had slightly better light. I used lower ISO, higher shutter speeds, and a wider aperture, and I put it on a tripod. And lo and behold, the shots improved drastically, and I was able to get some nice, sharp photos with plenty of detail. So what did I learn from that experience? Well, basically, I got a little bit lazy, and I really needed to use the correct settings for the gear that I was using. And I think an important lesson is that, as photographers, we need to be self-reflective, we need to be critical of our own work, and that's how we improve. Identifying your mistakes and learning from them will only make you a better photographer. So how did the comparison actually go between the expensive gear and the affordable gear? Well, I'll put up a comparison on the screen and can you tell quickly or easily which is which? I think this one's a little bit easier. I was in the same place, so the more expensive gear had a lot more focal length and we've obviously got a much bigger megapixel camera. And you can see just by the detail and the background, if we zoom in close, um, when we compare two images and we zoom in, it's fairly obvious which is which. And that's to be expected. I would have to get a bit closer with the affordable gear to get a similar result. So the most important thing I want you to take away from this video is that you can get out there and take really nice shots with affordable gear. You don't have to have the most expensive gear. Sure, it's great to aspire to having that, but you don't need it. So expensive gear will obviously make it a lot easier to get good shots, but it doesn't immediately lead to good shots. You have to have good technique and you can work on that with any gear you have. Just getting out there and practicing and enjoying yourself and learning is all part of the process. So perhaps let me know in the comments what gear you currently use. What did you upgrade to that you found made the biggest difference? It might help some other people. If you like this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of these videos, please subscribe. I've got a catalog full of videos that I've already created covering histograms, exposure, noise reduction. If you want to learn more about those topics, perhaps just check out my catalog. Thanks for watching. Take care and bye for now. See ya. But I had to use some really, I had to use some pretty, I had to use, the settings I had to use were pretty, ah. oh, and now we've got the sun. <laughs> How bright am I? <laughs> oh, the dramas of YouTube and trying to deal with sun. The good shots, and that's simply not the case. Here's a cold, <laughs> the wind's blowing, it's freezing. Oh, to be a YouTuber, eh?